Good evening everybody and welcome to the part 6 of getting started with AWS Glue for beginners by Spark part number 6. Uh, so far we've been doing great job. Congratulations if you have been following on all the series. So first part was basically we learned what is Glue. Second part we brushed up your knowledge on PySpark such as various commands, UDF, head, tail, filter, group by etc. Then the third part, we made a glue crawler. I essentially walked you over the console, the UI on the AWS management console. The fourth part, we essentially wrote uh, the infrastructure code. The fifth part, we essentially wrote a glue script. And now it's the sixth part where we are gonna write infrastructure code to host our uh, stuff. So uh, let's get started. Uh, again, if you are watching the directly the sixth part, I recommend watching you the prior, previous uh, parts so that you have enough context. So we have a glue, basically we have some mock data on S3, right? We made a glue database, right? We made a crawler and we also wrote a glue job. Now let's see how I can host this, right? Many times in the organization, you're not gonna write, uh, you're not gonna use the console. You have to write Terraform or cloud formation or some sort of infrastructure code, right? To host your uh, script. So let's uh, see that uh, in this video. So give me one sec, I, I'm just gonna share my screen guys. Give me one sec. All right, I guess I'm ready. All right, so you guys should be seeing my screen and before we begin, um, all the prior labs are here, part one, part two, part three, part four. Additional resources, if you are an um, advanced level, uh, if you wanna watch more complex topics on Glue, uh, you know, they are here as well. But each video has a folder and it's appropriate resource, okay? So let's uh, start. This is video number six. So we are gonna uh, remember, in the last video, we did write this Glue script. Uh, this is a glue job that reads from S3, right? Then we essentially convert this uh, glue dynamic frame into a Spark data frame. We essentially, uh, you know, basically refreshing your memory. So we wanted to drop uh, duplicates. So basically what we did is we combined first name, last name. We, we essentially generated some hash. And basically anytime the first name, last name is same, the hash will be, uh, the hash will be same, which means it's a duplicate, right? So over here, if you observe, uh, observe over here, uh, first on the top, we define a UDF function. Uh, all it does, it essentially computes an MD5 hash given on data. So we read the data from the glue catalog, right? Once we read, we convert that into a Spark data frame. Here I'm essentially creating a new column on that. And again, all this we did it in the last part, okay? Just refreshing your memory. We apply the hasher function and then essentially we drop all the duplicates, right? And once that is done, we convert the Spark data frame back to dynamic frame and then we write on S3. So this is what we essentially did in the last part. Now let's see the infrastructure code. All right, let me collapse this. Okay. Uh, on line number one, we are essentially defining our service name. On line number three, we have a dot uh, env as true, which means I'm gonna re replace a uh, couple of values from an environment variable. Uh, hard coding is not a good idea, hence I'm making it pretty generalized. Here I'm defining my tag and region. Here I'm defining my tags. A uh, tags essentially allows you to, um, you know, monitor cost in the cost explorer. I'm gonna use a plugin called serverless glue, which makes life super easy. Again, um, these two are the resource object. We did this in the part number, video number three and four, please watch that. Uh, I've already explained you the code for this part. So the main part is glue over here. So deployment bucket, the glue script over here. Uh, I will walk you over the folder structure first. Uh, observe your screen over here, okay? So here I have a file called glue script.py. Now, if I remove this, uh, bucket means this glue script has to be deployed on an S3 bucket, right? So here is the S3 bucket, right? Uh, I'm also giving a, a, a bucket for a temp directory because usually when glue runs, it has to, you know, store like metadata and intermediate results, right? So I'm essentially providing the temp bucket here. I'm also providing the temp directory. Uh, everything will go inside a folder called temp. Uh, over here, I am defining my job, which is, uh, I'll walk you, uh, you know, don't worry about that. Here I'm giving it a job name. So if you see dollar uh, env job name, so in the env, there is something called uh, job name uh, here. So glue script is the job name, right? 
a script path basically this is the script path so i'm gonna show you this so again my script path is same uh, to my file name right so hopefully made sense type as spark because i'm using spark i'm using glue 3.0 here i'm using the arn uh, maximum i'm gonna use three con 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 three dpus or three workers right i'm also enabling the job bookmark right so i'm, I'm essentially enabling the job bookmark so if you go to the console and i just want to make sure you you understand what i'm trying to say so if you go to job details uh, here that is a job bookmark right so i'm essentially enabling the job bookmark again i'll cover cover job bookmark in the further videos where i'll walk you step by step uh, you know again for now i'm enabling the job bookmark here I'm enabling the temp directory worker type is standard. This means I'm gonna use a G1X worker. There are two worker type that is G1X and G2X. Uh, I can show you quickly. Again, based on the you know type you select, you're gonna be uh, paying money as well. Uh, where did that go? <laughs> one sec, yeah, worker type. So G1X and G2X, right? So whichever one you wanna use. So I'm using standard here. A uh, number of workers has three, timeout has 2880, right? Maximum retry is one. That means when a job fails, do retry. Then here I'm providing uh, a local path, which means I'm saying uh, to the serverless framework that hey, my glue, uh, my glue script is my is in my current directory with the name called glue script.py. So if you see the local path again, it's same as the file name, right? Hopefully made sense. Um, again, now S3 prefix means now, uh, when you deploy my glue script, uh, put that into some folder, right? So I'm essentially gonna put that into a folder called scripts in the bucket. So I wanna show you the bucket quickly. Again, uh, we named the bucket as uh, glue, glue for beginners, right? So here, observe this is the path it will generate, right? Uh, so that's the prefix uh, execute upload true which means uh, from my local directory upload this file to s3 it will take care of that automatically uh, i'm just going to refresh your memory in case you haven't watched my first part this is where we are creating a glue database here we are creating a crawler right so you're you're saying crawler um, again the crawler is going to crawl over the s3 and essentially populate the metadata or the schema right and the target is s3 right this is basically we go over here that's the crawler that it's gonna do right so that's my entire stack and i would simply say npx sls deploy and this will deploy my entire stack including glue database glue crawler and glue script um uh to 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 the cloud so again i've already deployed the stack before the video so hence um you know uh says changes set did not include any changes to be deployed again everything is up to date right so now observe here we are here we have a crawler right here i have a database this database has a table called sawmill data again we did all this in the prior parts right so my glue script is gonna read from here right and essentially gonna uh, so if you observe the script here is our entire script right it's gonna read from the catalog and uh, essentially create a new folder on s3 um, again uh, inside new right so coming back here coming to my s3 so here you can see um, that's the script that's my glue script right uh, and uh, now let's uh, run the job so we're gonna we're gonna run the job so i started the job now this might take a couple of seconds or two i have already done that prior to the video and uh, here you can see all the results are now inside this folder called new so yeah, that is um, how we are gonna essentially deploy a glue script. Uh, essentially, we wrote the infrastructure code. Now, again, just wanna give you the roadmap for the entire series here. So we did all that. In the next part, we are gonna learn about workflow and triggers, how to set up a glue script on a schedule. We're gonna write infrastructure code as well. So we, I'll show you how to you know schedule these. Then after that, I'm gonna, then we'll dive into some complex topics for example, some architecture, for example, anytime a glue job fails, we want to receive an alert. Then we are going to go, uh, go into um, uh, some more uh, topics such as anytime the source schema changes, the job should fail and send an alert um, um, through an email. So that it, so basically, let's say you have a first name and last name and the type is string. Let's say tomorrow the data type was changed to an begin. Anytime that changes happen, 
it is essentially gonna mark the job as failed and it's gonna send an email alert saying that, hey, your source schema has uh, changed, right? So we're gonna do that. Uh, once we are done with that, then we'll explore some other options such as reading from DynamoDB, uh, Aurora, right? Then we'll uh, do some complex ETL, right? We're gonna read from various source, we're gonna cleanse the data, we're gonna you know, schedule these job on, on, on a cron expression, we'll build the entire Glue workflow. So a lot of stuff is coming in, so stay tuned. This is part six, and in the next uh, video, that is part seven, we're gonna learn and explore about um, the workflow and also how to write the infrastructure code. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you did enjoy all these amazing content, please make sure to do give a like and subscribe to the channel. And if you have any question, comment on the video, or re, uh, you can send me an email as well, and I'll try my best to answer that. Thank you so much, keep smiling, and I'll see you guys in the next video.